as a parent of a child with special needs, the one thing you learned, uh, sort of a rude awakening, you lose the what I call the taken for granted aspect of life. This is mysterious. Life is mysterious. Why doesn't Jared walk? Why is he the way he is? What happened, wherever it happened, to make this so? Some people, they were saying, you know, he should just be put somewhere and I should move on with my life. In the past, people with these kinds of uh, disabilities have kind of been hidden from the rest of society. So I think, you know, it is kind of a, kind of a mystery and, and a little bit scary for, for a lot of us. And they don't understand what we're going through. Like, because they have it, they don't have a disability. And they look at us and say we're not normal and stuff. They think that we're different. Yeah, they do. Yeah, different. They think that we're not normal. It's yeah. abnormal. They have trouble being accepted because they're misunderstood. They're not understood by the general population. It's hard. I mean, put yourself in our shoes and see what it feels like for one day. We go out and have people, you know, stare at us and stuff. This population is full of just as much complexity um, as any other human population. I'm Down syndrome, mm -hmm. and I'm very, very um, interesting. Each of them has a very unique way of seeing the world and very unique passions and skills and strengths. Society really defines them by these titles, developmental disability, autism, cerebral palsy. There you go. That's when we start trying to put th make things fit into categories and boxes and that kind of thing. I was one of those people that was afraid of disabilities because I didn't, I thought maybe I was supposed to act differently around people with disabilities. It's it's different. It's just something. It's just something different because you can actually have a conversation with them, but different than your five-year-old conversation. So, how do we address that awkward feeling we have when we see someone who is different and sometimes very different than we are? I know I have a disability, and I'm not afraid to talk about it. I'm okay with it. I mean, life is great for me right now. I have my own apartment almost for 22 years, my own apartment. I have a good life. I have, I have friends that I live with for Gail Donato. I like living together because I like helping people out and I like being a mother hand to my friends, Lily. We create opportunities for people to be independent in the community, to live in their own homes, live with their friends, or live by themselves. I mean, it's my big family, yeah. Everybody, everybody likes to do things. I remember one time, it was a big, big storm. It was really scary, and the lights were out. When that happens, we always get together, and sometimes they come to my house, like Tanya will come over. They talk about how much better their lives are when they're able to live in their own apartment, when they're able to go out and socialize and do things that everybody else does. It's their life. They're creating their life. And that's what's so exciting, is that they're not living in an institution where everything is predicted and everything's done for them. They're making decisions on how they're going to live. In my previous group homes, people tried, like, kind of judge me, made fun of me in a ways. But... Kind of like, like uh, calling her a crazy girl. Yeah. Here I feel like people don't do that to me. I could really be myself, you know? And just forget about your disability. Just be a person, you, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, a policy of safe way to like wear a bow tie or a scarf. You have to follow the dress code. 
we try to identify how they can leave home and have a more integrated life. I like having, you know, the opportunity to get out of the house and, and do something. Integrate is a good word, being in, in a community and feeling like uh, you're not separate with disability. It makes you distinct, but it doesn't necessarily make you separate. You're a little bit taller than I am. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're welcome. This is my favorite department in the whole store. All the time, when you go in that bakery, it's like, oh my god. Oh my god you just yeah. want to buy everything in that bakery because it smells so good. Okay. In other communities, you might not ever interact with a developmentally disabled person. And here, it happens, thanks to Lifehouse, and it changes all the misconceptions we have about developmentally disabled uh, people. Most of the folks here are nonverbal, so they're not really necessarily able to verbalize what they need, so it's more kind of knowing them more, um, really intimately. <clears throat> One guy in particular really loves it if you rub his hair, and he, and he likes it when you sing a certain song to him, and, and that's the way we connect, and, and he can really come out of himself. He looks at you, he, looks at, he has such beautiful big blue eyes, it's very expressive. Are they wanting to, to communicate something, and they don't have you know, the words to express it. What can we do so that they can? People are good at communicating it with him. Is that right, Jared? Not just with me. Not just with you, with everybody. Yeah. I can't pull. I got gun box. Hello. If you encounter a disabled person and you're not willing to drop into a sense of disease, if you will, you'll simply not see them. You'll simply move right past. Death of young people would like to come to Nirvana to the must. I think the biggest barrier is fear, ignorance, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but people not knowing. So many people just can't handle it. Most of society uh, sort of ignores them. I think that's the biggest challenge. People in general are insecure that they're going to make a mistake. They're going to say the wrong thing. They're going to do the wrong thing. When people don't understand things, they tend to to try to push them away. And I think that's that you know does become a form of ism, whether whether it's the racism or w whatever. So the question is, how do you drop people into being uh, relating to people just as just as humans, just as people, um, not as um, a political group that needs to be supported. Once you choose to engage, then it's a heart-to-heart -heart thing. How long does it take you to make a scarf? If I stick to it, anywhere from an hour and a half to two. Sienna Rose in Mill Valley buys my scarves every year. Okay, oh look at this, this is a cool one. Oh, I love this one. People are just amazed that Pam can do this since she can't see. Oh, Pam, I wish you could see how nice this looks. So feel, so here's the coat, and then see, right, the scarf is sort of looped all around the neck, yeah. and then at a jaunty angle thrown over the shoulder. Even though she can't see with her eyes, she sees better than anybody I know. I mean, she really has a beautiful view on life. When people are with her, they, they feel very accepted. <laughs> we got a lot of things in common. We love to tease each other. Hot lips. You're hot lips. I'm a cold lip. <laughs> Our relation gets along good. Tell me what you like about living here. Shot, Jane, Gail, and Pam. John, he's a character. And he loves talking like Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack, man, we tell you got a dirty man of God again. My job here is to pay attention to how each person communicates the best. Here you go, girl, here you go, girl. I want them to have 
fun, and I want to craft a home where people will complement each other and enjoy each other and have a nice life. I mean, isn't that what it's all about? Oh, what can I say? James Scott communicates by writing. And so for years, he's been writing to me whenever he needs something. And he knows, you know, that somebody's going to listen to him and then respond and follow through. You could say I'm a lucky guy. One of the biggest characters, Gail Garcia. When she gets an idea, she draws pictures, she cuts them out, she puts them all over the house. Non-stop art. That's me. We do have no parents. They have passed away. Your parents have passed away? Uh-huh. <clears throat> do you miss them? Oh, 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 almost like a, almost like a whole, old days. I don't know my real mother because my dad took me away from her when I was a baby. I cried about my dad. I cr you cried about your dad? Yeah. You cried about your dad? It's, it's sad, it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't need to cry. Right now, it's hard to explain right now because I lost my dad, my mom. I lost my mom, my dad. My dad used to take us to Tindam Park. And what'd you do? Like the merry-go-round. You're just a kid, huh? <sighs> Why does it benefit the community to have people with disabilities um, with them? I think it's interesting to see human beings whose brains work differently than your own. To see human beings who express emotions in ways that are different than the way you express them and that maybe haven't been raised with all the same sort of cultural conventions that you have been raised by. People with autism, their brains are wired differently. Each of them has a very unique way of seeing the world and are saying we have ways of seeing things that are different from you and we're not a disease, we're not a deficit. Tamson, we've been working on this and one of the things that we thought might help you is examples of little worries. What would be some examples of a little worry? Um, losing something that isn't essential or wearing mismatched socks. Yeah, things like that. And big then, note, notice that most of these are not big problems. Right, most but of the things that in your life. I, personally, myself, um, categorize almost everything as a very large problem. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that, right? right? I have a learning disability and I have a hard time learning things to start with. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, sometimes I can't get it right away, but I have to take a while to get it. Mm -hmm. Get this, I weighed a pound and a half. When you were born? Yes. I was fortunate and I didn't know I could walk, talk, or do anything out of the ordinary and I prove the word wrong, the wrong. I remember when I was like about like three years old, we found out, you know, I didn't, they didn't know exactly what type of, you know, disability that I had because it, it was something that I didn't have a name for it. I'm Nikki. My life pretty much sucks. I have to be fed, and I don't want to be fed, and I have to get changed, which I don't want to. Yeah, so what I'm in a watch, I'm a normal person too. Me and Jared are normal. Me and Jared are multiple challenged. Right. We're not disabled. People always come up and say, Oh, what's your name, little girl? I'm like, hi, I'm not a little girl. Get the heck away from me. What keeps you going? My mom. Because she, she, cause she's like, Nikki, you, I don't want you to go. You are the best. 
stop. You, you are the best. You are the best. And I'm like, I'm not a burden. And she's like, no. Okay. Well, I think your mom is coming, okay? You, you are the best guy. Here's what I want to do. I want to... I want to walk into my apartment, jump, jump into my mom's arms, into my mommy's arms. But I can't do that because I'm in a wheelchair. Oh, this guy's a pretty special man to me. I love this guy. Jared can't talk, but I'm known as the Jared Whisper. I, I, I got this for Nikki. She got my no, you win. You never translate it for me. You goofy head. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Three, four months later, he asked me to marry him. And you said? I said yes. You dream new dreams. You define success and progress and indices of growth, measures of growth in a completely different way. You know, when you're at, at work and people start talking about what their kids are doing, everyone is comparing, you know, oh, I was taking so-and-so to their soccer game, or I, you know, they just graduated middle school, or they just, they're in college. And people would ask me, you know, what is your son doing? And I would just, you know, go somewhere else. You know, it's time for me to leave. <laughs> um, even though he's doing great. Wait. This is our the variety, the variety of chores. chores. Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday we do. Every Tuesday we do, do the that. bathroom. Mm -hmm. If we don't do it on Tuesday, we do it on either Wednesday or Thursday. I have certain strengths and certain weaknesses, and some things are just not. I'm not strong at. Mm -hmm. And some people might expect me to do something that I might not be. I mean, if people would take time and just hear us mm -hmm. instead of you know. You know, having a, a label on us, you know, saying, oh, they shouldn't be out. You know, I mean, if you're not going to accept us, then forget you. I like the tiger. Yeah. 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 Black House is part of a larger social movement, I think, um, toward being accepted. Don't tell us how, don't tell us how to live. Yeah, I like the classic ones, I have to say. The Lego movie and That's Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Awesome! And I also watch um, Kung Fu Panda. Aww. I've made Jack Black does make a pretty good panda, but I just don't like the movie in general. We sort of identify as being a residential service provider, but we've got all those other aspects that sort of spring out from where the person is. Oh, nice job, young lady, nice job. Everything all right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the view. In our standards, right, we, we think they're constricted and they're confined. They're not. Now, the, the huge thing about this is concentration, Greg, right? You have to stay on it, right? It's important. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm yeah, stay on it. Stay kind of straight. Oh, lovely job, Greg. Lovely job. <laughs> Who's to say we're normal? Do you know what I mean? That's the question that I ask all the time. You know, who's zooming who? Who's leading who here? You know what I mean? For the rest of us who are challenged with self-esteem or career goals or whatever, it's a constant reminder that there's something else that's actually more important. Captain Greg! Captain Greg! You drove us all the way! You drove us all the way! I've had people say to me, oh, they're on a higher plane, or, you know, I don't think so. I think it's just, a, it's just different. Um, they're, they're having their experience, and I think it's just as valuable as the experience we're having. So just to warn you guys, the dogs are going to bark. I love to hold them, I love to cuddle with them. What do you think about that? I sometimes will have a hyperactive dog, um, and as soon as the clients come in, the dog just seems to decompress. Or autistic person come in, and they're just sort of all over the place, you put a dog in their lap, they decompress. What we know is that if people get what they need, then we are able to ensure that they reach their potential.
when Lifehouse steps in, in that next step of life, which is taking these kids that are now adults and moving them on, getting them to fly, getting to, to step out of the nest. He doesn't have to fit in a mold of what should a 32-year-old in the United States society be doing. Well, who knows? <laughs> but, it, but he's doing what he's doing, and he's doing it well with the support of, of Lifehouse. <laughs> um, we well, like to watch movies together? Yeah, and we like to snuggle. I like everything about her. I just like her. I like her a whole lot. Maybe too much and she tells me she loves me and I tell her I love her. Mom. Do you like my personality? Do you like... You're sweet. Sweet's good, sweet's very good. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Oh God, I don't know. I hear welding, welding bells. Shut up. They don't. Yeah, I do. They don't. Come on. No. Fine. No, I'm not getting married anytime soon. I'm not talking anytime soon. I'm talking way down the line. Tomorrow? No. Because I could do it tomorrow if you want me to. You're crazy. I am? Question for you. Well, they back here, come here. Ball. We got into the replay. Hey, who is that on? One of my biggest fears was, you know, when I'm not around anymore, you know, who's going to take care of Kwame? Who's going to provide for him? Who's going to love him as I love him? Going forward, I mean, that's what, what our worry is when, when we're no longer here, because this will be a, a lifelong uh, disability that she has. That's the most comforting thing about Lifehouse, is that when I die, I don't have to worry what's going to happen to my son, because he has a family here. Can you sing a song? Sure. Can you, do, can you do Imagine? You want to do Imagine? Please. All right. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try You know, I think it's going to be exciting what happens over the next few years because the more we get into this, the more we see that the things that we can do in being able to provide services to these people. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Lifehouse is really saying everybody's um, human needs are just as valuable as everybody else's. And we'd say, okay, well, you have this disability, we can help you with that. I mean, I want to be in a community that is inclusive. And LifeHouse's clients are living meaningful, successful lives and serving us as members of the community. And watching Kwame grow, I could not have scripted a place better than, than LifeHouse. Looking at my colleagues and the people who work in this field, there's an incredible satisfaction and honor to work with the people we serve and, and earn their trust. We want to make a good life for them. We want to help them have a good life. And that's what I'm hoping parents feel a relief that they've found somebody who cares, who really wants to help. And if I can do that for parents, that's the best.